We, you, you and me, we can do it. All right. Do it. Are you up for it? I'm up. All right. What's this class warfare business that Democrats are hoisting on the country? What is this? We didn't see that during your administration. Well, you know, I don't look at it as class warfare. I think if you look at what's happened over the last 30 years, the middle class has lost ground. Even before the recession, the collapse, before the financial collapse, median income was $2,000 a year lower than it was after inflation when I left office. So I don't mind paying more taxes, but because I think I got the benefit of the tax cuts under President Bush and the benefit of being in the top 1%, so my income went up. But that won't solve the problem. That'll help us balance the budget when there's growth again. But we have to change the whole job structure of America. We've got to basically reorient our economy toward the future. That's the real answer. But that's not being discussed. What's being discussed by the Occupy Wall Street people and by uh, some elements on the far left is the one percenters, me and you. We, we're not paying our fair share. I think I am paying my fair share. Now, I didn't mind paying well, what you, you had me at. Yeah. I didn't mind paying you that. But do you know between among you, Obama, and Bush, who had the highest tax receipts of all three of you? Do you know? Bush. So under prosperity, the tax cuts under Bush, more money flowed into the federal government. So Erskine Bowles comes back and says, let's cut the uh, corporate tax from 35 to 26. What does Obama say? What does the president say? No. But if you look at what the Bowles Simpson Commission recommended, I think there are a lot of great things in that report. Then why didn't the president take them? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that. But I think the... What Bull Simpson did is what I think should be done, some variation of it. They said, this long-term debt's going to kill us. We have to deal with it. Let's adopt some short-term strategies to get growth going. Then let's have a long-term debt reduction package. That's what I think we should do. And I, I think it'll work. But I was surprised that the president didn't embrace it because it gave him a pathway out of the mess. And uh, that's where we are right now. Now, one more question about the uh, class warfare. You, you, are you really convinced the Democrats aren't playing this card? Because that's all we hear is tax the rich, tax the rich, tax the rich. I don't mind paying 40 percent. And that was the high under you. All right. And Bush cut it back down to 34 percent. But I don't want 500 billion dollars going to Solyndra and it's bankrupt. Am I crazy? No, but I think the idea of moving to a cleaner energy future and doing more energy efficiency Love it. makes smart sense. And the, what happened to Solyndra was a unique case. With the Chinese producing more and subsidizing more, and with Americans in the business doing more, the price of the traditional photovoltaic cells dropped so much that it became an uneconomical thing. I personally prefer tax credits for yeah, people who actually credits, produce right. it, because then if you and I have a different technology, we're on even footing. In your book, you say the key to getting the economy started is to get the banks to start lending money. Well, how are you going to do that? You can't force the banks to lend money. No. Well, first, I say there, there's two big pots of money that don't run up the deficit, banks and corporate treasuries. I recommended in this book that we essentially let corporations repatriate their money by, with no tax if they hire more people with it. And if, if they pay the capital gains rate, they can do whatever they want to, and then we should take that money and seed an infrastructure bank and then take private capital. Do like other countries. Most other countries let private investors and from all over the world invest in their infrastructure and just use the, their government funds as the base to attract their private capital. Right. I think that makes a lot of sense. So you could do that. Okay. Now, 28 attorneys general don't want Obamacare, suing the federal government. 28 out of 50, all right? I want you to make a prediction. Supreme Court going to overturn that? I doubt it. I hope not. Well, I know you hope not. You're a nice Democrat, you're a loyal guy, but the individual mandate, very troubling in the Constitution. Wouldn't you say that is the big hinge? I look at it in an entirely different way. Let's look at it just pure economics. The people who are defending the status quo, are defending a system that is the only system in the world that charges 17.5% to insure of income every year to insure 84% of the people. Every, no one else, no other rich country in the world spends more than 12% of income to insure 100% of the people. And we don't get better health outcomes. And we're spotting our competitors a minimum, a minimum of $850 billion a year. It's terrible economics. Under you the know current the solution to that? system. 
You know the solution to that. Let the insurance companies compete statewide. Let everybody get in the game and drive the price down. Let the insurance companies compete across state lines. That's right. In other words, create a national market for insurance. Yeah. Well, you're saying we should create a state by state no, choice. No, let the states regulate. Like there, let them regulate what happens there, but let everybody compete. And again, your party doesn't want that. They well, want. I they want I, I, that's one place where I agree with the Republicans. I, yeah, I think you're going to have to defect here, Mr. Clinton. I think, that's what I'm hearing. Here. No, uh, no, I think you might have to defect. I'm for the and individual I'm mandate. You should, that's the conservative position, the individual mandate. But I do believe that insurance companies should be able to compete. Look, the businesses, you know, they're going crazy. They don't want this. Nobody wants it in the business community. They, well, nobody wants like what that. they've been told about it, and they, they, we've taken long enough to get through it. But I think no, it's there's not no reason we couldn't have the idea that we have to spend 50% more than any other country on health care is nuts. I'm, agree I'm agreeing with you. Let it go into the free marketplace. You'll drive it down. Now, i got to give you a hard time on the border. You ready for a hard time on the border? All right, you took office 93, about four and a half million people were coming across the border. You left office, seven million people a year coming across the border. Why couldn't you secure it? Because the economy got better. It's a long border. Well, I know. We had a fence, you know, in San Diego. And it worked. It worked pretty well. Well, why didn't you put it down <coughs> in Brownsville all the way through? Because, for one thing, back then, even the Texas Republicans didn't want it. Because but you could have done it by executive order. Who, who cares what I don't doing? know if I could have or not, but I, nobody was upset about it then. People were moving back and forth across the Rio Grande. I was upset. I know you were, but I think it's a mistake. If you really think we ought to build a whole fence, that's about the only way to secure it. And I do. I do think the federal government has let us down since 1984 in the sense they have not secured the southern border, and they could have, and they didn't. Okay. Guantanamo Bay, you close it? I, I'm not sure that I know enough to know that. Come on. But I, you, you've been there? But I... I would. Uh, I don't believe I'd ever opened it in the first place, but I'd like to see it closed. Really? You wouldn't have opened it in the first place? Where are you going to put all these captured terrorists overseas? Where would you have put them? Well, I think there are places they could be kept in America. But then as soon as they go on American soil, they have the rights of the American people in the, under the Constitution. And these are... These That's are, not necessarily uh, true. I, I no? have a big difference of opinion about what the law should be. I might have tried to change the law on that. Okay. Today, Vice President Biden said, uh, actually it was printed today, but he told Newsweek magazine that Taliban is not an enemy of the United States. And since you had to deal with the Taliban, training al-Qaeda before 9-11, you certainly know what the Taliban is all about. And I believe the Vice President is wrong. Am I wrong? Well, I think... I don't know that they trained them, but they certainly gave them self ha safe haven. No doubt. And they would give them safe haven again if they were free to operate in Afghanistan. Absolutely. Which is one of the reasons I've always supported our mission there. And I think what the Vice President probably was saying is Al-Qaeda was our affirmative enemy. They were trying to kill us in America. They were trying to kill us in Iraq and elsewhere, in Africa and lots of other places. And the Taliban itself had not conducted out-of-area operations against us. That's probably true. But that doesn't mean that I think we should not be really concerned if they were to govern Afghanistan. Again. One of the things that I would be concerned about, and I always have been with the Taliban, is how miserable they made life for so many women and little girls. Absolutely. And that, you know, I mean, this downright uh, abusive thing. Evil. It's evil. Did you now with President Clinton, whose new book is Back to Work? Okay, now, President Obama, his chances to be reelected re are, I'd say, 50-50 at this point. Would that be fair? I think they're a little better than that. Why? Why would you think that when uh, most of the polls show his approval's low 40s and most people, 60% feel the country's headed in the wrong direction? Because Why? his approval's up in the last few weeks and because of this payroll tax cut where he's for it and it looks like the House may not be. And yeah, but that's transient. Their right? approval rate is down to 11%. All right. you know, I, think, I think, and let me also say, because I think he's out there running against himself now. As soon as he gets an opponent, it'll be... Who's for better. the next four years, who do you think is more likely to take us in the right direction? No, but he, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a referendum on President Obama anyway, no matter who it is. You work with Newt Gingrich. You respect him? I respect his ability to think and do, and I eventually hammered out a really productive relationship with him. You respect him as a man? 
I, I don't disrespect anybody who works with me in good faith. I think he was way more political than I would have been. Uh, he he's defended uh, what he called scorched earth politics, and I certainly was a beneficiary of it. But I think that did he use unfair tactics on you? It depends on you know, not in his mind. That's, in your mind. I don't think about it like that. I either liked it or I didn't. Was he an enemy of yours while you were in the White House? Until he got to be Speaker and until the government shut down, changed the public. Uh, and then you mood. found Dayton? Yeah, we worked together for five years. Would you vote for him? No, I'm going to vote for Obama. Why wouldn't you vote for Just take the president out of the equation again, a good Democrat. Why wouldn't you vote for New Gingrich? Why, why would you not cast a ballot for him? I can't take that out of the equation. I'm, I, I believe in a whole different direction in uh, energy policy. I think the president's done a good job in foreign policy. And I think that these, we've got a better economic strategy now going than the one he's likely to implement. I thought the best thing he said in the campaign, though, Gingrich, was what he said two debates ago in the foreign policy debate about how this immigration issue should be handled. But then the very next day he said he didn't like the Ninth Circuit decision, so he just wanted to get rid of the Ninth Circuit. And then he mentioned some other decision. He didn't get his arm on to fire this federal judge. So He's on this program tonight, Gingrich. He's coming up right behind you. I bet he'll be very entertaining. Well, we'll uh, we've challenged him on but that. But anyway, I, let me just say this. When we were working together, I enjoyed it. And I think he has a lot of knowledge, and I think he comes up with some quite creative ideas. The primary, the purpose of a primary, is to test everybody's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, the metal. And everybody's got strengths and weaknesses. And this has actually got an interesting dynamic between now, between Newt Gingrich and Governor Romney. What about Romney? You uh, know him? A little bit. I, I always, um, unlike you, I like the Massachusetts health care bill. And the Massachusetts system is more expensive than the rest of America, but it was before the health care bill passed. And inflation and health care costs in Massachusetts have been less than in the country as a whole since it passed. Okay. If you had a vote between Romney and Gingrich, if you snuck up to New Hampshire because anybody can vote in that primary, you go for I am... I'm not going to get in that Republican primary. No, no way you could ask me any kind. All right. I also like Huntsman, you know, and if I voted for him, I'd be in the 1%. But he arguably has the most consistently conservative economic record of anybody. Well, right. he did very well in Utah. There's no doubt about it. Now, when uh, your wife is running against uh, Barack Obama in New Hampshire, and this must bring back memories to you, um, the press favored Obama, correct? No, oh, I think yes. All right. No doubt about it. I don't think there's any doubt that the American press favored Barack Obama over Hillary Clinton in the primaries. Now, is that going to happen again? Is the American press going to favor Barack Obama over the Republican candidate? We'll just have to wait and see. You know the answer is yes. Now my question is, why? Why does the American press favor the more liberal candidate? Well, I... I think there was more to it than that last time. But uh, well, well, tell, well, they, but tell, I me, think, tell me what but they I, didn't like your wife because of what reason? I, I, I'm not going there. She's the Secretary of State. Nothing I say can be helpful on this. It's but you have an interesting opinion. All right, that, that, yes, I, I have respect an opinion, that. and I'm going to keep it to myself. I respect that. I respect that. But you obviously have thought about this, and you have thought about the media and how it handled the primary, the Democratic primary last time. I can see it in your eyes, and I, and I respect the fact that you don't want to burn any bridges here. But there is, and you're in the Fox News channel now, you're in the no-spin zone. And this channel was created because of the, of the labyrinth that the media had set up that was largely liberal. Largely, and you were a beneficiary of it too, a little bit about, against Bush the Elder. Um, and it still is there to this day. So generally speaking, why is the media more liberal than conservative? I don't know that it's always been that way. Uh, for example, in 1992, when I ran, I was hardly the, I was the, hardly the beneficiary of it in the primary. Not I in the primary, the, but in the I main, was the flavor you of the day. Right. And so, you know, they always like what's new, and they always like a conflict, and they always like a story. But 
nothing I can say will contribute to anything good happening in America. <laughs> so I am not going to contribute to that. All right. The book, once again, is Back to Work, and we appreciate the president taking the time. We posted the entire interview unedited on BillOReilly.com. Directly ahead, Crowley and Combs will analyze that interview. And then Newt Gingrich will defend his controversial remarks on federal judges. He wants to hold them accountable and might send out U.S. Marshals to do it if he were president. Moments away. Heads up, Dave. Get your friends. Heads up, Jim. The Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event. Come in now for our best offers of the year. The one thing that 99% of investors can 